Do artists really have to starve to be true to their craft? Must the business side of creativity drain all inspiration? No, it does not. Five minutes on creative entrepreneurship can help you master the business side of creativity, reap greater rewards from your talent, and enjoy your work to the fullest. I'm so glad. In the last episode of 5 Minutes on Creative Entrepreneurship, I talked about the maximum earning potential for creative entrepreneurs. While creatives don't go into business to make a killing, we still want to be well compensated for the value we deliver to clients. But while making good money from our work is great, that's not the only reason we're in this business. We're drawn to creative entrepreneurship because we love the work, as well as whatever financial rewards it might deliver. But when we combine our love for the creative process with the realities of running a business, that joy can soon turn into sinking grief. I'm Eric Holter, and I've been a serial creative entrepreneur for over three decades. After graduating from Rhode Island School of Design in 1991, I could cut and print beautiful wood engravings. But I had no idea how to run a business. They just don't teach enough about business in art school. Creative entrepreneurs are often victims of their own success. Once we accept a project, we get drawn into the work, and we're driven to maximize the potential of every opportunity, regardless of a project's budget constraints. Another way of putting it, we chronically over-deliver. This makes our clients thrilled, but it also shaves away our profitability. Thrilled clients lead to great word of mouth, delivering more clients with low budgets and high expectations. And we repeat the cycle to our own detriment. Most other businesses don't suffer from this problem. A contractor builds a house based on a buyer's budget. They don't add extra floors or additional bathrooms just because they think it will make for a better house. Creatives need to learn how to operate by business constraints. If we don't, all the joy we have in being creators will soon be drained by financial pressures, mounting deadlines, and impossible client demands. When creative entrepreneurs treat the business side of creativity as an afterthought or push business matters to the side because they don't like dealing with them, they end up creating the very problems that end up undermining their joy in the work they love. Creatives avoid business tasks because they enjoy the creative part so much more. But long-term neglect of business fundamentals will end up eroding the pleasure of creative entrepreneurship. If creatives would only embrace the business side of their work and master business fundamentals, this would end up securing and preserving the parts they love. I've been walking the path of creative entrepreneurship for over 30 years. The first decade of my experience was typical of most. I loved the work, but dreaded dealing with cash flow, talking to my accountant, struggling with payroll, keeping projects on track and on budget. I hated having to balance my checkbook and forecast revenue. But when I reflect on all the struggles of those early years, I can trace most of them to mistakes that were entirely avoidable. If only I had known how to manage my business properly, and if I had given regular attention to these matters. A well-run creative practice creates an environment where creativity can thrive and the creative process can bear the most fruit. A chaotic and stressed out business environment kills creativity. So do yourself a favor and start building basic business disciplines into your creative practice. Learn how to manage your books and your cash flow. Get control of your projects and schedules. Cultivate the skill of accurate estimating and make sure your marketing is delivering sufficient opportunities to keep your engine humming. If you want to kill the joy killers that are undermining your creative practice, but don't know where to start, pick up a copy of my book, Blazing the Freelance Trail, Professional Practices for Creative Entrepreneurs. In it, I introduce you to the main aspects of the creative service business model, your money, minutes, marketing, and management. And I walk you through some new tools and processes you'll need to run a successful creative practice. You can find Blazing the Freelance Trail on Amazon in print, Kindle, and audio. Make that investment in your business, and your business will preserve the joy of creativity that got you into this career in the first place. Until next week, don't let the business of creativity overwhelm your creative business. Five Minutes on Creative Entrepreneurship is a podcast by Eric Holter, mentor to creative entrepreneurs. You can find more content and resources at ericholter.com. His book, Blazing the Freelance Trail, is available on Amazon in print, Kindle, and audio. 
If this podcast is helpful to you, be sure to share it with your colleagues, and ratings and reviews are always appreciated. I'm so glad. Trouble don't last.